Jesus declares he is self-aware. And we need to know Jesus and be introspective. So verse 14, right? The self-righteous rulers, the spiritual people of Jesus' day, didn't know Jesus and didn't know the Father. The only thing they knew was the rules. They had the rules memorized. They didn't have a relationship. That's why I, my friends, I'm not a religious person. I'm not. To be fair, I don't like religion. I don't. Especially when you realize that religion is about people reaching out to God. So we make up ways to reach out to God. They're all false, they're all phony, they're all dumb. That's religion. Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. So that, so that Jesus is my Savior, yes. He's also my older brother, because I'm an adopted son of the Father. It's about relationships, so that I can abide with them. The self-righteous religious leaders didn't know about any of that, didn't care about any of that. All they wanted to do was to obey the rules, take the rules to browbeat other people so that they stayed in power. Now that sounds like religion to me. And I'm against it. And if, if we look at how Jesus treated these guys, I think Jesus was against it too. So I think I'm in good comfort. We don't want to be like the self-righteous religious leaders who are all about the rules and not about the relationship. We know as sinners that we need to know Jesus to be saved from our sinfulness. We need to know Him. We need to accept Him. We need to make Him ours, as it were. It's about the relationship, my friends. So let's not be like the self-righteous religious leaders. The self-righteous religious leaders get picked on by the Apostle Paul. Paul, who's not involved in the four Gospels by name. Paul, in Acts chapter 13, he's preaching a sermon. And he's preaching in Acts chapter 13, and he lays it down that the rulers and the people of Israel have rejected Jesus. Not only did the self-righteous rulers reject Jesus, but his own people rejected him. It's kind of a favorite subject of Paul because Paul is an Israeli. And so he's talking about his own people. And when you read in Romans, you read about his heart because he expresses how his people had rejected Jesus in order to create opportunity for the non-Israelites, the non-Jewish people. Me, I'm a Gentile, for Gentiles. But that Paul's heart was broken over that rejection. And Paul had hope that in the end, Israel would come to faith in Jesus Christ. That's not new information either. That's fulfilled prophecy. We talked about Isaiah and the suffering servant, Isaiah 53. Now I want to talk about Zechariah chapter 11. Because Zechariah chapter 11 is, is just as terrifying. <laughs> it's just as terrifying. Zechariah chapter 11, God is chastising the Israelites for their unfaithfulness. Can you imagine that? And he makes, he makes a statement in this chapter that there is the true shepherd and the false shepherd the true spiritual leader and the false spiritual leader and Israel always chooses the fault every time Israel picks the shepherd who makes all the promises tells them what they want to hear what a condemnation Zechariah chapter 11 and we see that fulfilled 
we've seen that fulfilled all throughout the Old Testament. Thank you, Israel, for being such a bad example. I learn a lot from bad examples, but we see it in the New Testament very clearly. But we need Jesus. We can't reject him on any level. We are sinners. We know we have the disease of sin, evil, and wickedness. And in fact, we have spent our lives creating an ocean of sin, evil, and wickedness. That we have lived our entire lives swimming in and enjoying the filth we have created. In fact, we don't even notice its filth anymore. And we're drowning in our wickedness. And Jesus is the lifeguard who offers to rescue us from drowning in the ocean of our wickedness. He is the judge who wants to acquit us and throw the case out, declare us free, men and women, to go about our business without any negative judicial record. Sinners need Jesus. And that's us. Romans chapter 3, verses 23 through 25. Right? Romans 3, 23 through 25. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified as a a gift by His grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. We have all sinned. We have all fallen short. It's all made right by Jesus, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in His blood through faith. This was to demonstrate his righteousness because in the forbearance of God, he passed over the sins previously committed. Praise the Lord. We are forgiven. We are saved. We are rescued by Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And Israel and the self-righteous spiritual leaders rejected all of that. We have a need because we are the sinners. We've earned hell. We've earned punishment. Tenfold, a hundredfold, a thousandfold. We earned it. We deserve it. And we don't want it. Thank you, Jesus, for rescuing us. So sinners must accept Jesus in order to be saved. That's what Paul writes in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, where Jesus saves us, the sinners, from our wickedness and our eternal hell and punishment. So we have to believe in Jesus. We have to put our faith, our belief, our trust in Jesus with our, all of our heart and confess him with our mouth. If we will believe in Jesus with all of our heart and confess him with our mouth, we will be saved. We will be delivered and rescued from the hell, torture, and punishment that we have earned as a gift from Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. But it's Jesus only, my friends. There's not multiple ways here. Acts chapter 4, verse 12, makes it absolutely clear. There's no wiggle room in this verse. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Acts chapter 4 says, And there is salvation in no one else. No one else. For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which you must be saved. There are not multiple pathways to God. There are not multiple pathways to heaven. There are not multiple staircases going up. There's only one door, there's only one gate, there's only one way, and that is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The Bible gives us no other alternatives. Everyone else has accepted a false idol, some kind of weird religion that's made to make them feel better while they drowned in their wickedness. And you and I as the saved are commissioned, empowered, given the purpose to do the work of evangelists and share this salvation with those drowning. And we, the saved, 
must never, ever think that we're better than them. Somehow we earned it because it is absolutely a gift. So there's only one way, and that's Jesus, Jesus only. But it's also a gift, an act of grace, without us contributing to it at all. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift from God. We receive it from God. It's a gift given in love, and we are grateful for it. Right? Jesus knew himself. The Pharisees didn't know him. It's important to know Jesus so that your sins are forgiven, so that your ID is completely changed. And you are empowered to live a life that transcends dirt and dust. That's two of the three ideas.